Stormont. I'm a principal engineer uh, developing uh, MRI electronics, MRI coils. I've been doing it for 30 plus years. So I'm part of a, a, a lab that looks for advanced technology to move us forward on our roadmap. And we have incremental roadmap, which we look next generation, next generation, next generation, and, and what technology we need to develop to get there. Way on the right side of that roadmap was the idea of extremely lightweight and flexible coils. And, and we saw enough going on in this small lab that I worked in to think that maybe we could land over on that side of the roadmap. So I was leading a little team to try to develop the technology to kind of jump over a couple generations of, of technology and land in the place we wanted to get to, the air technology for, for GE. Hi, my name is Fraser Robb, and I'm the chief technology leader for GE's MRI coil business. So air technology is a collection of technologies and uh, it helped overcome some real uh, problems with conventional technology. So GE invented the phased array back in 1990 and millions of scans were done with the conventional style phased arrays. And there's some limitations with conventional technology and how the elements are placed and how flexible they are and how heavy and bulky they are. And so the, the, the emphasis of, of the air technology project was really to overcome all these traditional limitations of conventional coils and make something that was very soft, flexible and pleasing to patients. I'm Holly Blanick. I am a clinical development specialist uh, for GE. A coil that relates to the air coil in a typical way would be an anterior ray. You would lay it on a patient and you could scan the liver or a pelvis, but if you ever wanted to move to a different anatomy, you'd have to physically go in, move the coil, and re-landmark. So a lot of patients will come in and they're very sick um, or they're in a lot of pain where they just can't physically fit and conform to our rigid coils that we provide. I'm Michael Brandt. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for the MRI business at GE. You know, the vision of the project is, is essentially to, to improve how our instruments are uh, used and perceived by customers. Every day when patients go to an MRI scanner, there's a certain level of discomfort because of the medical imaging procedure. Um, and if you can make them more comfortable, uh, you, you improve the image quality by, to some extent. If you help the technologist to set up the patient in an easier fashion. You reduce the number of repeats that, that are needed and you make their lives easier. Um, and then um, if you can facilitate getting the coils really close to the anatomy that you want to image, you can improve image quality too. Uh, and then roll into that, the customers need to have a more durable package. You have an air technology coil. All MRI coils perform broadly the same function and they, you know, they're, they're placed in the body. Uh, often they can be heavy, have limited flexibility and maybe only in one dimension. So in this, this type of coil actually is only dim flexible in one dimension, it's not flexible in the, in the, back, in the other direction. So they, they're kind of more industrial electronics as opposed to what we've developed with air technology. You know, we like the idea of building clothes or blankets rather than industrial electronics to cover the patient. I think the development process here was different in that uh, the team had a, a much broader scope to, to find a solution. We allowed them the capabilities to, do, to trial this as many times until they got it absolutely right, instead of um, tolerating a bigger compromise. The people that I got to work with on the, on the project, a couple uh, uh, um, long-term coils folks and and um, we started uh, marching through this trying to solve the problems that come with a uh, lightweight flexible coil and we found that a lot of times you get trapped in a corner and you'd go for a conventional solution and we realized in doing that that the, it was going to become a conventional coil eventually if, if we did that so we would stop we would back up uh, reassess where we were at and, and go after it from a different direction. So, and we were given that uh, it was a compelling enough project at that time to the leadership that even though we sometimes were stalled, they continued to support us because we were able to uh, um, keep showing that uh, the, the, the vision of what this could be and, to, and convince them that, hey, we're going to get over this hurdle. This was uh, prototype uh, number one, the 16 channel coil. We ended up out in a bay. Our leadership team showed up. We had our first volunteer uh, brought in, and they used the industry coil initially to to image, and then they um, and then we uh, you know used the um, the 
air coil and started getting the results and about at that time is when it really took off. Yeah, so the first prototype was pretty exciting. We really had no expectations, so we wanted to see what the coil can really do. So we put it around every single anatomy we could possibly think of, and we, we started to realize that we can really do anything with this coil. There's really no limitations. So this is uh, one of the new air technology loop element. Uh, it's a combination of technologies, including uh, the blue inca conductor construction, and the, 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 the wonderful EMOD preamplifier. And these two technologies together allow us to uh, d develop, allowed us to develop the air, the air blanket where coils can be heavily immune to each other, but also be lightweight and flexible. And these two technologies work very closely together to give a very high signals to noise uh, with a minimum of uh, interaction between elements. So the, the new preamplifier allows us to put elements together without interacting. And so you end up with a, um, a flexible coil where you're not trying to precisely control the overlaps and you can allow them to move relative to one another and not have them destroy or inter interact with each other. So that was sort of the breakthrough. It allows loops to be chosen, the size of the loops to be chosen on the anatomy that you're looking at, the position of the loop to be chosen on where you want to place it. Um, a lot of these previous mechanical constraints would force you to compromise. The promise of air technology is not that we can just do what we've done before, but the promise of air technology is that we can apply air technology elements and coils to parts of the body that would be extremely difficult to image otherwise. So perhaps in the neck, perhaps uh, on the foot, uh, you know, perhaps uh, on the brachial plexus. These are all areas wh which would be extremely difficult to image with conventional technology. But now this really opens up uh, uh, the possibility of wearable MRI coils in future. So instead of placing heavy industrialized bulky electronics on the patient, we're able to provide close like experience to the patient. Um, it was announced, um, you know, that it, that it had been cleared by the FDA um, just before RSNA last year, and it was a real exciting uh, moment when you realize that uh, yeah, the FDA agrees it's a, it's a product also. So suddenly we crossed that line, and this was it. We get a lot of credit for the, just the size of the coil. They're doing applications that they couldn't do previously. There's been some recent work with uh, spines, people who cannot lay their back, laying on their side, and they've been able to position this coil as a spine array. Normally, that's a long array built into the table. Now we have this long array that can be positioned kind of um, as needed on a patient. The technologists, the people have to, to get the thing to the table, so, um, you know, this is 30 elements. Uh, typically, just l getting something like that to the table is an effort, um, and uh, trying to get it positioned on the patient. And with the lack of flexibility, um, sometimes there's some real challenges. There's some anatomy that isn't well covered with this because it flexes both SI and right left. It can conform um, to uh, various body shapes and anatomy. So it becomes very useful uh, for, for applications where it just wasn't well served with the coils that preceded it. I don't think we even realized how big this is for a technologist, but when you, when you see their reaction uh, um, to just being able to handle the coil and position the coil and feel confident that it's going to give you good image quality, it's fantastic. So the reactions are pretty common <laughs> um, between people that hold it. So they'll hold it and then they'll say, like, wow, what can we scan with this? And then you can say, well, what would you like to scan? And then we just start with that. So then they'll take the coil, they'll fold it, they'll wrap it up. So, you know, they're even like, can I, can I lay on top of this? And you're like, yeah, you can do that. Can I fold it up and put it in the closet to store it? Yeah, you can do that. Can I wrap it around my leg? It's like, yeah, you can do that. So I think the excitement is just, it's there because they've, they've never seen this before. So, and especially the lightweight of it, they're like, oh, it, it really does look like a blanket. It really does feel like a blanket. We tested the first 16-channel air blanket at Stanford Children's Hospital. You know, we could immediately see the difference in the atmosphere and the suite. Uh, we could immediately see how much easier this was as an experience. 
uh, to the point that the technologist told us we should write on the blanket something that said do not tumble dry because people didn't realize that this was not just a blanket. And what the doctor in charge told us at the end of his study, Dr. Shreyas Fasanawala said, uh, after our care providers and patients and uh, technologists saw what your device could bring, uh, there was no turning back. We just, they just wanted to be using the air technology for all their pediatric patients. It's 66% lighter and just so much more flexible. And you can just conform it right to the patient and um, set them up in, an, in a very comfortable position. The coils are close to the, uh, to the anatomy, so image quality is just naturally better. Everybody that doesn't have an air coil is going to have to have an air coil in the industry to, to move forward. I think it's definitely going to change at MR. Like I said, there's really nothing like this in the market today. So from a technologist side, it's going to make me setting up patients a lot faster. It's going to allow faster throughput, uh, more exams. And also just the biggest thing is the patient. So we want to make it more comfortable for them. There currently are no coils really in MRI that can make a patient actually feel comfortable and not feel nervous or scared to have the MRI. So having coils that can conform to them and put them further at ease is a huge leap in MRI. Well, it's, it's all in the experience. I, I think in the future, this becomes a necessity. Uh, once, once you've tried these coils and used them, there's not much of a way to go back. So conformal, is it, Holly, to yeah. the body? And, um, you know, it could even, it could uh, even, even suit uh, the Scottish ethnic market. So for <laughs> Scottish Highland dress. And, 